cursive, boldness, sizes, line heights, spacing letters, capitalized, uppercased, lowercased, underlines, overlines, line throughs, alignments, and a character unit. All of those is what we cover in this one lesson. Anything related to making typography responsive will be covered in a different lesson. Now starting with making text cursive, there are two ways to do so. In my CSS, I'll select my entire paragraph and I'll give it the font style property. I'll set it to italic and when I save, we see our entire paragraph is now cursive. This works, but using the font style property isn't actually the best approach to making text cursive. I mean, for one, italics is currently being applied to our entire paragraph, which is probably not what you want. And second, using the font style property isn't as semantic as using the mhtml element, which achieves the same purpose, but semantically. And so I'll remove my rule set, and in my index.html, let's say I wanted the first two words of my paragraph emphasized by making them cursive. To do so, I can wrap them in the emphasis element, and when I save, it might be hard to see, but the first two words of my paragraph are now in italics. The M element is more semantic and gives you more control over what should and shouldn't be emphasized. And therefore, I almost never use the font style property and instead usually just use the M element. However, when it comes to making text bold, although there is an HTML element to do so, this time the HTML element, although more semantic, isn't as flexible as its CSS property counterpart. So for example, let's say I wanted to make the last three words of my paragraph bold. I can do so by wrapping them inside the strong element. When I save, we see the last three words of my paragraph are now bold. This is good because this is semantic. However, the strong element doesn't give us the option to select our desired level of boldness. In the previous lesson, we imported our desired font family from Google Fonts. And looking at our link tag, we see this font family that we imported actually comes with nine levels of boldness, 100 to 900. 100 being very thin to 900 being very bold. And so maybe we're happy with how bold our three words wrapped inside the strong element are, but let's say that we wanted to change the level of boldness of our H1 element. I can do so by heading over to my CSS, select my H1 element, and give it the font weight property. By default, heading elements have a font weight of 700. And so if I set it to 700 and save, we see nothing changes. But if I set it to 100 and save, we see our heading is now very thin. Or if I set it to 900 and save, we see our heading is now very bold. Now looking at our live server, we see our hello world heading is much larger than our paragraph. This is because in my index.html, we see I'm using an H1 element for our heading and a paragraph element for our paragraph. By default, H1 elements are given a larger font size than paragraph elements. And this is by design because if you've ever looked at a newspaper, you'll have noticed that the titles are always larger than the paragraphs. There is a sort of visual hierarchy happening where our eyes are being guided by the typography. This design principle permeates past print media and is also applicable in web development. Now our heading is already much larger than our paragraph, but we can still change the size of our text with the font size property. In my CSS, I'll give my h1 rule set the font size property. And before giving it a value, it would be useful for us to know the current size of our heading prior to attempting to change its size. To see the current default size of our heading, I'll open the developer tools. I'll toggle on this inspect button and I'll hover over my heading. We see, when I hover over my heading, a pop-up appears with useful information about our element. The element we're hovering over is an H1 element. Its color is currently black, and more importantly, we see that the default font size that the browser assigns to the H1 element is 32 pixels. With that information, I can either give a bigger value or a lower value to my font size property. I'll set my font size property to 50 pixels, and when I save, we see, our heading is now much larger. By the way, this is the pixel unit. This is the first unit being introduced so far in this course. Later in the course, we will have an entire chapter dedicated to units. But for now, all you need to know is that the pixel unit represents one pixel on your monitor. I'll inspect my paragraph element, and we see, by default, paragraph elements have a font size of 16 pixels. 
This is useful to know because with this information, I can select my paragraph element and give it a font size of 18 pixels, which I know will make it slightly larger. And when I save, we see our paragraph is slightly larger. Looking at our paragraph, there seems to be a height in between each line. This is known as a line height. The current line height on our paragraph was added by default by the browser. Without this line height, our paragraph would be difficult to read. And to demonstrate in my CSS, I'll give my paragraph the line height property. Unlike the font size property, this property takes in a unit list number. If I set it to zero, we see our paragraph is all squished up together. If I set it to 1.2, which by the way happens to be the default line height, and save, we see this brings it back to how it looked before. And if I set it to 1.5 and save, we see this looks very readable. Ultimately, the purpose here is to have a line height that is readable relative to the font size of the element. In addition to a line height, we can also add space in between individual letters. I'll give my paragraph the letter spacing property and I'll set it to 5 pixels. When I save, we see a space of 5 pixels was added in between each letter. Now, this isn't actually something you would want to do on a paragraph because it reduces readability. However, it is something you would consider adding to a heading element. For example, I'll remove the letter spacing from my paragraph and I'll give my h1 a letter spacing of 5 pixels. When I save, we see our heading is still readable. Now, currently, our heading is all lowercase. If I wanted to change the capitalization, I can do so by adding the text transform property to my h1 element. We see VS Code is showing us the different values that we can use on this property. If I set it to capitalize and save, we see the first letter of each word in our heading is now being capitalized. If I replace capitalize for lowercase and save, we see our heading is now fully lowercase. And if I replace lowercase for uppercase and save, we see our heading is now fully uppercase. Now let's say I wanted to add an underline on my heading. I can do so by giving it the text decoration line property. This property has three options, underline, overline, and line through. If I set it to underline and save, we see our heading now has an underline. If I set it to overline and save, we see our heading now has an overline. If I set it to line through and save, we see our heading now has a line through. And if I set it to all three options, so line through, underline, and overline, when I save, we see all three options are being applied to our heading. I can set a color to our lines with the text decoration color property. When I set it to red and save, we see our lines are now red. We can also change the style of our lines. For example, I'll add the text decoration style property. And if I set it to solid and save, we see nothing happens. This is because solid is the default value. If I set it to double and save, now our lines are doubled. This would probably be easier to see if I just had underline as my text decoration line value. If I set it to wavy, we see this made our lines wavy. If I set it to dotted, this makes our lines dotted. And if I set it to dashed, we see our lines are now dashed. Another thing we can do to our lines is increase their thickness. I'll add the text decoration thickness property and set it to one pixel. We see a text decoration thickness of one pixel makes our underline small and hard to see. If I set it to 30 pixels, this probably makes it too large. And if I just comment out this property and not use it, we see the default thickness is probably the best. But if you wanted to change it, this is the property you would want to use. Now there's actually a shorthand property that we can use to define all of these properties all at once. I'll comment out all of the text decoration properties and then add the text decoration property. This is a shorthand property, and a shorthand property is a property that does the job of all its sibling properties, but in one property. So what this means is that I can set the text decoration line, color, style, and thickness using only this one property. To do so, I just need to separate each value with a space. So for example, I want the line to be an underline, so I'll say underline. Then I want the color to be red, so I'll add a space and say red. I want the style to be dashed, so I'll add a space and say dashed. 
And finally, I don't want to set a thickness, so I can just not set one. And when I save, you see, we've got our red dashed underline. Currently, both our heading and our paragraph are aligned on the left side of the screen. However, we can also align them in different ways horizontally. With my dev tool open and the selection tool toggled on, I'll hover over my heading and we see our heading covers the entire width of the viewport. Our heading covers the entire width of the viewport because the H1 element is a block level element. We go over what that means in a few lessons, but for now, what's important to know is that there's all this empty horizontal space within the content area of our H1 element, and we can align our text horizontally within this empty space. To do so, on my H1 rule set, I'll add the text align property, and we have six options available. Center, which we see centers our text. Left, which we see brings our text back to the left. Right, which pushes our text to the right. Start, which functions relative to the language of the text. Since hello world is English, start aligns our text to the left. End, which aligns our text on the opposite end of start. And finally justify, which doesn't really work on our heading because our heading is too short. I'll add a text align of justify on our paragraph. And when I save, we see it lines up each line perfectly. Now to finish off this lesson, I want to introduce you to a new unit called the CH unit. CH is short for character, and this unit is very useful for typography. Currently, my paragraph occupies the entire width of the page. This is not good because when paragraphs span too wide horizontally, they become difficult to read. As a general rule of thumb, your paragraphs should be in between the ranges of 45 to 75 characters. Any more than that would be considered too wide and therefore difficult to read. To make our paragraph less wide, we can give it the max width property, which by the way, we will learn more about this property in a few lessons. However, instead of giving our max width a pixel value, we can use the CH unit as to define a width relative to the number of characters we want to limit. So if I set it to 50 CH and save, we see this looks a lot better. And we know that we're in between our 45 to 75 character range because we're using the CH unit. This unit is a unit I mostly use for typography when I want to set a width equal to the exact number of characters I want in one line.